Mmm, delicious brain rot. Skibbity Fortnite! Why do you look so confused? Have you never been a Sigma rising up a flowberry burst yacht in reckless railways? It's the catch-all term describing the past few years of low-quality yet massively popular internet culture, from skibbity toilet to lobotomy memes, to even subjects in offline spaces. Brain rot is an incredibly flexible and easy to apply piece of slang. It can apply to posting, to YouTube kids, to any content considered low quality yet large in quantity. Ultimately, it perfectly describes the effects of prolonged exposure to a fast-paced online world, dominated by short clips designed to grab the attention of the viewer and ensure that they swipe to the next piece for hours on end without gaining any meaningful stimulation from the act. People will often describe themselves as brain-rotted in relation to this phenomenon, joking that their own minds have been irreversibly damaged by the horrors of social media. One could like an online brain rot to the endless halls of poker machines, with players tapping and dancing at their screens plastered with unknowable flickering lights and joyful sounds. Back when YouTube Kids had autoplay enabled by default, children would watch brain rot content for hours and hours on end, racking up terrible animation channels, millions of views and tons of cash, leading to massive criticisms of this practice such as ElsaGate. As such, this video seeks to explore the concept of brain rot and pin down exactly where it is seen the most and why. Thank you, yeah! Whilst it's unclear who coined the term, brain rot started seeing major success when applied to the phenomenon whereupon subway surfers footage, or Minecraft parkour, or those videos of soaps being cut paired with Family Guy clips were all the rage on TikTok. As such, brain rot shorts or brain rot TikToks are commonly positioned together as phrases, as the concept of watching ultra low quality content in high doses injected straight into one's eyeballs on a daily basis is generally associated with what the worst of social media has to offer. So-called satisfying videos would crowd the screens so much that the actual main content originally presented in a short would be heavily obscured, and the end result is a constant overstimulation destroying the brain. At this point, the onus of brain rot is also applied to certain generations of children. Generally, the ones who grew up watching YouTube videos on autoplay on their iPads, aka iPad kids. Of course, this assumption seems to apply to Generation Alpha, but before then it was Zoomers and Millennials using social media too, and before then Gen X and Baby Boomers were considered the TV generations, and going back even further in history it turns out even novels were considered brain rot because you weren't actively learning anything for reading a fictional story. Seriously, there was massive outrage regarding the hobby of reading for pleasure, which was described as addictive and antisocial, which sounds extremely familiar. Many also compare the popularity of early 2010s Gmod humour to the modern trends of the 2020s, demonstrating the fact that what may appear as mindless brain rot at first glance is often constructed with a story in mind. Due to this, the generational attack against Gen Alpha is quite unfair, although it does work to encourage rage bait and thus may be fun for some to exploit. Algorithms are in charge of spreading this content, often encouraging videos to watch the clips with the most engagement, which just so happens to be slapped onto GTA 5 footage or Minecraft parkour or videos of people peeling soap, aka brain rot. In fact, social media companies prefer brain rot content to be the norm, as it ensures high retention levels, a metric that tech executives absolutely adore because it means audiences are giving their attention to an app designed to take advantage of human biology. Of course, this idea is one that has been reflected in pop culture for many years too. There's this fantastic comic called Tokyo Ghost that illustrates the idea of brain rot being taken to its extreme logical limit brilliantly. The comic is set in the future of 2089, in a world where everyone is addicted to watching shows and social media. One of the main characters, a hulking man named Led Dent, is constantly jacked into watching his newsfeed at all times, to the point where he becomes easy to manipulate and totally disconnected from the rest of the world, to the point that it has become a drug for him, blinding him to the fact that he's committing extremely violent acts without realising exactly what he's doing. It's the perfect representation of how brain rot can manifest in a story, satirizing the very real fact that humanity is being bombarded with an overwhelming amount of information every single day, all designed to get us addicted to watching just one more video. You can see the same thing with the 2008 film Wall-E. It's well known that social media is designed to provide dopamine with every single like and every single click, so that we keep looking at it for as long as possible in order for tech companies to sell user data. That dopamine hit can be habit forming, and for some social media addiction can be a very real problem, leaving them feeling worn out and tired after a day of watching mindless brain rot. It's not as if all social media content is brain rot. With a varied and balanced array of information, it can be totally fine to just chill out and watch your favourite YouTubers or gaming videos or whatever niche hobby you might 
might have. But when it gets to hours and hours of watching exactly the same thing without any change, it can become a serious mental health issue as you fall into stagnation and cognitive decline. On that note, it's worth mentioning the fact that the word rot has become something of a meme in itself. Concepts like bed rotting have been bouncing around the internet for years, and perhaps much of this stems from the fact that humans are quite good at being self-destructive. There's also the satirical side of things, where creators pretend to be experiencing brain rot, such as Hepatitis BA4 referencing countless online bits of slang in an intentionally low-quality manner, which of course evokes comments from people who don't know it is satire describing their content as actual brain rot. POV, I'm bringing Ninja to get a low table fade and Duke Dennis starts whizzing him up. Come on, Ninja, let's go get your low table fade. The implication is that after watching too much of it, one becomes zombified. But anyone who spends an iota of time online has no doubt come across this phenomenon themselves. As such, brain rot can be perceived in a couple of different ways. Yes, sometimes we can suffer drastic consequences of being subjected to low quality content and social media platforms designed to manipulate the dopamine switches in our brains to the point where we scroll for hours on end and feel like we've turned into a mindless zombie for the day. But on the other hand, it's okay to have a little bit of brain rot as a treat. You can enjoy sh** posting or viral videos or goofy TikToks. It's just that the healthiest way to do this is to simply strike a balance. And once you've got that down pat, then suddenly brain rot content feels like less of a major threat than it ever used to be. And looking at trends in the past, it isn't as if newer generations are inherently more prone to brain rot either. It's just that the massively popular low quality content that is presented in huge numbers looked different back in the day. Before the internet was huge, it was TV. And before TV, even novels were considered a form of brain rot as they represented addictive content produced at a high quantity. And so it would appear that the term is one that is new and extremely flexible when applied to the online and offline world, but in a way, it has existed forever. What meme would you guys like me to give a lesson in next? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, like and subscribe! <laughs>